This sounds like an unimaginable horror story. Unfortunately, it was a very real existence for one man. For 23 years, Rob Hubin was imprisoned in his own body. He could listen in on the conversations that doctors and nurses were having around him. He remembers when his mother delivered the news to him that his father had died, but he could not react. He was unable to communicate with anyone. He could not move or cry. He could only listen as the world around him passed him by. That is, until neurologist Steve Lorries discovered that Hubin was misdiagnosed and was not really in a coma. This has to be an isolated incident, right? Unfortunately, it's not. In 2009, according to neurologist Steve Lorries, 40% of so-called vegetative patients had been badly diagnosed and that in reality they returned a certain degree of consciousness. Why is the rate of misdiagnosis so high? To answer this question, one has to understand what comas and vegetative states really are. So what is a coma? For a patient to maintain consciousness, two important neurological components must function correctly. The first is the cerebral cortex, which is the gray matter covering the outer layer of the brain. The other is the reticular activating system, which is located in the brainstem. Damage to either of these areas can result in a coma, which is characterized as an inability to be roused, and unresponsiveness to pain, sound, touch, and light. Coma may, be, may occur for various reasons, such as intoxication, central nervous system diseases, a serious injury, and hypoxia, oxygen deprivation. Coma can also be induced deliberately with pharmaceutical agents for medical purposes. Now that we know what a coma is, let's explore the differences between comas and vegetative states. A person is considered to be in a vegetative state when she or he is able to be awake but is totally unaware. A person in a vegetative state can no longer think, reason, recognize what is around them, or feel emotions or discomfort. In other words, the higher levels of the brain are no longer functional. Serious injuries of the thalami, cortical neurons, or the white matter tracts that connect them cause the vegetative state. The term vegetative suggests a preservation of autonomic functions, such as cardiovascular, respiratory, and thermoregulation functions, as well as a reemergence of the sleep-wake cycle, which includes periods of the eye's spontaneously opening. Under the umbrella of a vegetative state, there are two subcategories, persistent and permanent. A vegetative state is considered persistent if it lasts for more than four weeks, and is considered permanent after one year. After suffering a traumatic event, what happens? Initially, after a serious injury to the brain, a person can fall into a coma. Coma can then progress to what is reclassified as a vegetative state. In fact, a person rarely remains in a coma for more than two to four weeks without recovering, dying, or progressing to a persistent vegetative state. Because these two classifications depend highly on outward behavior, as well as brain activity, it is difficult to define when someone is actually in a coma, according to Lari's. The vegetative state and the minimally conscious states are disorders of consciousness that can be acute and reversible, or chronic and irreversible. Let's go back to Rob Hubin for a moment. In Hubin's case, Belgian doctors use an internationally accepted scale to monitor his state over the years. Known as the Glasgow Coma Scale, it requires assessment of the eyes, verbal, and motor responses but they failed to assess him correctly and missed signs that his brain was still functioning. The Glasgow Coma Scale is a reliable and objective way of recording the initial and subsequent level of consciousness in a person after a brain injury. As seen on the chart, the Glasgow Coma Scale scores a person based on their eyes opening, their motor response, and their verbal response. Every brain injury is different, but generally the level of injury is classified as severe, scores of 3 to 8, moderate, scores of 9 to 12, and mild, scores of 13 to 15. A person is generally said to be in a coma when they have scores of 3 to 8. In terms of what is actually happening in the brain, several studies of resting brain function of patients in a vegetative state show a baseline decrease in cortical metabolism to 40 to 50 percent of normal values. Metabolic function then worsens over time in vegetative state as a result of transsynaptic neuronal degeneration, but the brainstem and hypothalamus are generally not as affected. Functional neuroimaging studies show a severe reduction of brain metabolism in the frontotemporal parietal network, with activation limited to primary cortices after auditory or physical stimulation, suggesting the absence of integrated brain processing.
In 2010, the Coma Science Group researchers and their colleagues at Cambridge made another fundamental breakthrough in showing that it was possible to communicate with vegetative patients through the means of scanners whose technology was based on functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI for short. Classically, the clinical evaluation of coma always proceeded via muscular response to a stimulus. This study showed that, thanks to fMRI, a doctor could detect traces of consciousness and even communicate with so-called vegetative patients due to the fact that they mentally responded in an appropriate manner to a task suggested by the evaluator. Similarly, lorries do special techniques that showed that some patients considered to be in a vegetative state are in fact reactive. In his tests, patients were asked several questions, with the answer being yes or no. The results found that, compared to normal brains, the vegetative state had similar brain activity, as can be seen in the picture. Current research begs the question of what it means to be conscious following an injury that leads to a coma or a vegetative state. As technology evolves and more individuals are able to receive fMRI or EEG tests, it seems that consciousness will be better understood in patients that exhibit little or no physical behavioral responses. Enhanced understandings of comas and vegetative states allow for the advent of incredible treatments. One example is of a man that was trapped in a coma-like state for six years that was brought back to consciousness by doctors who planted electrodes deep inside his brain. The method used, called deep brain electrical stimulation, has allowed a 38-year-old American man to once again communicate, to perform complex movement, and to eat. Prior to the surgery, the man showed few signs of recovery for over six years. The man was in what is called a minimally conscious state, a condition similar to a coma, but characterized by occasional evidence of environmental and self-awareness. The research team that performed the operation believed that they could turn on the undamaged areas of the brain by amplifying existing low levels of activity using electrical impulses. To do this, they implanted pacemaker-like DBS electrodes in the central thalamus, a region that plays a key role in regulating sleep and consciousness. After allowing the patient to recover from surgery, doctors wanted to find the most effective pattern of stimulating the brain with the implanted electrodes. By balancing periods of electrical stimulation with intervals where no stimulation occurred, researchers were able to accurately measure the effects the stimulation was having on the brain. Here is a simulation of what the procedure looked like. In conclusion, there are a number of issues surrounding comas and vegetative states. Because of recent research and advancements in our understanding, the debate has been reopened over when the decision should be made to terminate the lives of those in comas who appear to be unconscious but may have fully functioning brains. Diagnosis of these two conditions is complex, and diagnosis is being made easier through processes such as fMRI scanning. Because of the nature of these two conditions, patients must be monitored closely for changes in state. Further, studies have shown that patients can and do, in fact, retain some levels of consciousness, leading to current and future technological research that will allow for more advanced treatments. Overall, there still remains more research that needs to be done.